I had 13 offers mm-hmm. come in. Not one of them told me what was in the offer in the email. <laughs> I don't know how, why, why, what are you doing if you're not doing that? What are you doing? It's very easy. You already it, know what's it in said, the offer. It literally <laughs> said like, see attached. Yeah. Or the worst, oh, this makes me so angry. When they send you a DocuSign yeah. like oh, link, yeah. like yeah. view docs. Like, no, no I don't want to open up no. my DocuSign. I want you to download them and then upload them to email yep. like I have to do with every offer that I submit. Like, yep. If you're I not doing that, what are you doing? No. What are you doing? What are you doing in this business? You're not doing it. No. It should be very, very simple. Welcome to the Realtor-ish podcast. I'm your host, Juliana Gainsburg. This podcast is all about helping entrepreneurs grow their business through real estate and business development strategies. In each episode, my guests and I will chat about the real when it comes to real estate. If you like what you hear, follow us on your favorite streaming platform. Welcome back to the Realtor Ish Podcast. I'm your host, Juliana Gainsburg, and today I have with me the one and only Nicholas DeLuca. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. I just want everyone to know that um, he wasn't easy to get on this show. <laughs> Very busy guy. I appreciate um, that. <laughs> and also, I don't know if he was, if you were really like wanting to do the whole podcast thing, but I'm very appreciative that you're here. Um for anyone who's listening or watching and doesn't know who you are or what DeLuca Homes or the DeLuca Group is, give us like the rundown. Yeah. Um, so great question. First off, thanks for having me. I am excited. First podcast I've ever done. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm excited, a little nervous, yeah. but um, but I'm happy to be here. So quick little rundown. Um, I'm, I'm the owner of the DeLuca Group at Keller Williams. Uh, that's the real estate side of things that I do, which is strictly buying, selling, investing, working um, with clients. More, more, more of a, an everyday activity, yeah. I would say. Every hour, every minute, I guess you could say. Um, so that's the real estate side focus thing. Then I also have uh, DeLuca Construction, which is in the building world. Uh, my uncles and cousins own a, another bigger company called DeLuca Homes, which is also in the in the construction world. Um, and then I work with my uh, younger brother as well. Chris and James um, with an architectural firm called Progetti. So I've done a little bit of everything so a far. A little dabble of everything. Yeah, real estate. So sure. if I were to go on like the like MLS or like home, home snap and like look at the numbers for the DeLuca group, are you leveraging um, new construction listings with that? Or is that just like... Yeah, or a good regular lead gen through clientele and that kind of thing? It's a great question. Um, construction's uh, an up and down business. So new construction, there'll be years where, yes, I leverage that. There's a lot of sales in the new construction world. And then there'll be years that there aren't as many. So um, a lot of people think a lot of my business is just new construction, but I deal with a lot of resales as well. So like last year, very low new construction, to be honest. This year, just recently sold three or four or five new constructions. Um, 2024, because we're always looking ahead, Looks like that's going to be a good new construction year. It all depends on, um, you know, plans, the projects, approvals, yeah, everything you have to get and to to get to that. Takes point. time, and also, would you say that last year was um, down because of parts and labor and that kind of thing? Hundred percent. Yeah, delays, um, cost of lumber, labor. Right. Um, it was. It came. You know, I guess you could say 2021, 2022, but all that came from the previous previous years of uh, things being delayed. So there's a need for new construction. There's a need for new homes. Um, I would like to be the one to deliver them. I would like to be the one to build them. I would like to be the one to sell them. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of what I am really into right now. So yeah. that's the goal. Which is that like something that you would say you're more passionate about? Like you enjoy the new construction process? Um, yes. I would say at this point in my career, 100%. Um, I, for better or for worse, I'm a deal junkie. Um, yeah. Like I just like doing deals, whether it's selling, buying, renting. I still do rentals. I just closed a fourteen thousand dollar piece of land parcel, literally fourteen thousand yeah. dollars. I will do any type of deal, but if you ask me what really gets me excited, it's from taking a raw piece of land, um, getting it approved, developing it, selling it, being the realtor on the deal, being the builder on the deal, being the architect. I'm not the architect, but being yeah, involved, but involved in the architecture. In that. Yeah, that. From start to finish, I yeah. think that is just, it's a lot of fun. I think it's, I'm intrigued by the whole idea of like watching it all come together, picking the things out, looking at the plans, understanding, okay, this is how a bathroom is going to be able yes. to fit. And like, yeah. I think over time for me, knowing like general contractors dealing with selling homes that need to be remodeled, like I can go into a house and say, listen, this bathroom is 
right on the other side of this access panel for the mm -hmm. water. So like you could easily do this. You're not going to have to like dig up floors to like get to X, Y, Z, but that's like very bare minimum, like knowledge when it comes to. No, it's like, good to have. That, it's good know? to have. And, and I, and it does help me with my sales. I'll be yeah. honest with that. It does help me. It helps me get leads. I'll be honest with as well, because a little bit different than just a uh, standard uh, buy, sell realtor. Um, it helps with investors. So it's good to know those things, you know, it's good to build those relationships with contractors. It's good to be able to speak that language. And the more you do it, um, and the more you're involved in it, you're going to get better and better at it. And that's, you know, when I first started selling real estate, I wasn't really in the new construction space right away. And then yeah. it's kind of evolved and I'm, I'm getting better and better. I would still say I'm only 50% there. I think right. there's still 50, 60 more percent that I could grow in that. I have a lot more to learn, but I, you know, I had a father who's an engineer. I have a brother who's an architect. I have my uncle Vince, my uncle Joe, yeah, my cousins that are in it. So I have a lot of people I can turn to and ask questions. Yeah. Um, and I'm very fortunate for that. I know that that's very lucky to have. Um, so I have a, a background in it from day one, which, yeah. is, which is nice. So speaking of your background, what is that before real estate? Yeah. So um, I went to Villanova, graduated Villanova. I've been a local guy my whole life, uh, Bucks County and then Villanova. Um, I, I wanted to stay close cause I got four younger brothers. I got a big family. Um, so I got right out of school, went into, I was a loan officer, um, kind of in like a chop shop though, not the loan officers you see today that are out taking people to dinners yeah. and lunches. Those are cool loan officers. Yeah. I was in a call center, um, smiling and dialing, they would say yeah. 200 dials a day, um, which is very hard. It sounds kind of easy, but very hard. 200 dials a day, um, doing a lot of home affordable refinance programs, during that time when people were underwater when I got out of school in 2011, 2012. Um, so I got right into a, the, I guess you could say, financing side of real estate. I loved it. And I did it for a while. It was great. I learned everything that there could be about financing, about debt. And it really just kind of sprung me into, you know, getting into real estate after yeah. that. I mean, all of that... May, like gives you tools to just be a better agent yeah. in general. Like the more you know about all the things. Credit, yeah. debt, interest rates, ARM products, um, everything that taught me is a baseline. Yeah. And then I remember one day I was like, I'm kind of getting sick of this. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a lot. $200 a day was a lot. Uh, yeah. Hell doing the yeah, same it thing, is. Doing the same thing every day. I don't even want to do $20 dials no, a day. No, And I just sat there like this with the headphone on and we just kind of yeah. went and did, did it. Did you use like a dialer? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they tracked it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I lost my window seat one time because of that. <laughs> oh boy, so, yeah. dude, that's uh, intense. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I was great. I was in the corner at a sweet office, uh, a mm. couple of days in a row of not hitting the right amount of dials numbers, and lost it. Yeah. Um, but then that sprung me into real estate. My dad suggested get your real estate license. They go together. Um, yeah. Then I got my real estate license and I, uh, I kind of took it from there. I joined a. Um, a, a team. I got a mentor mm -hmm. in real estate, specifically in Philly. Yeah, you were at White um, Kurt first. I was at I was at uh, Space and Company first. Okay. I joined the McDonald Group, and then we moved to White mm -hmm. And then eventually, um, you know, I was selling with a great team, doing fairly well. Um, and then eventually, I wanted to kind of make the jump to Keller Williams and yeah. start my own team, my own brand. And um, I learned a lot, though. I, I highly advise people to get with a mentor, get with somebody you trust that can teach you because. Um, you know, if I didn't have that, I, it's very hard to just kind of jump right in. Yeah, without, for sure. Without How many agents do you have on the team now? Like nine, 10 around, uh, fluctuates here and there sometimes. So I'd say nine or 10 or 11, got a good, I got a good core group right now. Really, yeah. really excited about it. And, and are they all do, do they have specific roles or they all do anything? We're all sales. So I, I, like that. I yeah, I believe sales runs the show, uh, yeah. at the end of the day, if you can sell, you will always be around. Um, and I'm trying to teach them. The way I was taught how to sell, yeah. um, which is kind of like um, not just your sphere, but, you know, relying on relationships, connections, meeting new people, going out, meeting people, because um, I think it's important to build that base really, really strong. Because yeah. if someone turns the Zillow switch off or someone turns the social media switch off, you will still be in business because yeah. you know what you're doing. You talk to people, you're out meeting people. I think it's really important. So I'm trying to teach them the way to do that. So we all do sales. Um, you know, I have some admins that help, um, shout out to take me to closing. They're great. Mm -hmm. Um, they help documents and things like that, but I am all about sales. So speaking of shouting people out, <laughs> which I, sometimes I don't do. And sometimes <laughs> I get carried away with like name dropping. Yeah, There's well, people I listening to. that have like probably no idea who I'm talking about. They help. Um, so the reason why I knew who you were was because mm. back when I first started, I started in KW in Newtown. Yep. 
and I'm from Bucks County and like I knew of other builders names yeah. and like DeLuca Homes like I've mm -hmm. shown in um Lakeview Estates I yeah. think it is yep. I think those yeah. are DeLuca Homes yep. or maybe not Lakeview it's called it's a 55 and over right off of the right outside the borough of Newtown um, um I think it is Lakeview yeah I think it is Lakeview yeah I'm pretty sure um right. yeah. they're like by level single yeah. family yep. <clears throat> um so like I knew of the name yeah. before that and then a friend of mine Duffy Barrett yeah. Who said I had to shout him out on yeah, this podcast? So guy. I promised I would. Great guy. I remember him saying, Yeah, so uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna go to the city, yep. my boy Nick. Darn it, he's exactly coming to KW. That's exactly how it went down. <laughs> and that's exactly how he sounds. Yep. Um yeah. so I remember like him like saying that, like, I'm leaving, I'm out. Yeah, and it made sense because, yeah, yeah. you know, he was in the city. Um We talked about that a lot, and I always wanted to have him join the team, but I wasn't a team leader at that moment in time. Yeah. So I said, when the time's right, come on down. Yeah. And he yeah. was like, I really didn't want to leave KW like, yeah. for him in that situation. He yeah. wanted to stay there. And so um, I remember thinking like, who the heck is this dude <laughs> that Duffy's leaving the office yeah. for? Like, this is our family. Yeah. Like, you know, whatever. Um, And then he was the first call I made when I was like going, mm -hmm. trying to figure out where I was going to go and I wanted to be in the city. Yep. And um, made a good decision. Yeah. yeah, it's just a lifestyle decision. Totally. It has nothing to do with, um, no. like, the people, you know, great people up there. It was as um, far as, like, relocating. Like, yeah. I have a house in the city now, yep. and um, the idea of what I wanted my business to look like and I, where I wanted to be for yeah. my life was the city. Of course. Which is funny because everyone's, like, running from the city, well, you know? Yeah, a lot of people in my general yeah. sphere of, like, people are growing families I and they're, like, heading to the burbs. And I did the reverse. I flipped. I, went, yeah. I was in the city, then went, moved back to the burbs. But, no, I love my time in the city. And I would have encouraged you to get there because I think the city's not going away. I, it's You build your roots there like you're yeah. doing great and then you could service new jersey you could service bucks county montgomery yeah. county chestnut hill all options from there yeah. i think it's a smart move Very yeah smart so shout out to duffy because everything yeah. comes full circle i know crazy he Good was man. like i was like i needed to give me like the real honesty like <laughs> what's going on down there he's it's like good. all right listen all good stuff all good stuff that does <laughs> um, sound like him. <laughs> yeah yeah so um but yeah so does the team service multiple states are you what's yeah so yeah so we do pennsylvania new jersey uh like i said um you know construction businesses to they do all different states as well okay um so yeah we 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 try to go anywhere i mean the the guys and gals on my team like i really try to instill in them that this is your business uh, you need to work on your business every day and never say no like don't ever say no if someone says can you drive down the shore to show me houses and you're licensed in new jersey go down there like yeah. you gotta sit because who knows if you close that deal another referral comes who knows who you meet when you're down there I'm all for that. I'm telling you, that's how I built the business where I'm at today. I always said yes to everything. Yeah. Always. I think that is a testament to what you've created because you saying like, oh, like you're like a deal junkie. Like yeah. that makes sense. Like you are passionate about it. You yep. enjoy it because a lot of agents are lazy. Yeah. A lot I, of them. Honestly, I feel like I've gotten to, I got into like a little bit of that kind of like yeah. stigma for a little bit, just not wanting to leave the city. Oh yeah. Just enjoying like the pace of it and like, parking in like wherever and yep. just like doing my showings in and out. It's very like quick pace. Yep. And so when I'm in the suburbs and I do, you know, I still have a ton of roots for Bucks County yeah. that I'll get deals oh, with their yeah. clients and it's just different. Yep. So I agree. I agree. You have to kind of like almost like humble yourself. Like, yeah. you know, you, there's, you can always get better. You can always get bigger. Um, there's a lot of great realtors in Philly, in Bucks County, in Jersey that I look to and, 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 they're always growing. Like people are always growing. Like yeah. once you hit these certain thresholds, yeah, you might get a little complacent and things like that. Yeah. But um, I can I can tell you that I never thought that I was going to get to five million sales. I never thought that I was going to get to ten million sales. Yeah. I never thought I was going to get to fifteen. But then you kind of snowball effects and keeps going, keeps going, and keeps going. And then eventually you kind of start building a team, you start building homes, you start selling homes, you start growing. It's uh, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's pretty what? Interesting. If you don't mind, like sharing, what is last year's volume for the team? Um, I think we're pretty close to fifty million last year. Yeah, um, which is good. My goal is a hundred million. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's not bad. It's good. Yeah, I want to be a hundred million team. Um, yeah. but there was parts coming in and out. So yeah, uh, now we have a real good core. Like I said, 10, 11 people, all the processes set up. So these next two years, I'm really, really um, buckling down because I want to be at a hundred million over the next two years. I think we can get there. Um, I'm positive we can get there. It's yeah. just we got to put in the work. And yeah. everybody's starting to. I it's exciting, though. Like, yeah. 
it's I think you got I think you have a good group going. Yeah. Um I know I've met and know most mm-hmm. of the people on your team and everyone's pretty awesome. So for everyone to like find success that way, it's it's like a happy, exciting thing yeah. to do. So totally, totally, totally. Yeah. Great. I yeah. love I love passing on my knowledge to people. I I I truly love helping them grow. Like my goal is I want to have everybody on my team doing $10 million, happy, going on vacation, spending time with their families, growing their families, yeah. buying wedding rings, doing things like I, I want that to happen. I sincerely want that yeah. to happen. And and um, people like, even if you don't say that people can feel that yeah. energy, like yeah. you put oh, yeah. that out to the world and a, a good leader, like cast a vision that's big enough to hold everyone's vision. Yes. So if you're able to, if, if someone comes up to you on your team and they're like, Hey, I want to do X amount of deals this year. And mm-hmm. that will, you know, z- yield you yeah. whatever it is yeah. and you can ha- help them do that. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter what the splits are or, no. or who the name is on the sign no. or whatever it is. I'm going to be with them too. It's a part of, um, I might be a little bit different than a team leader. Like I'm on your buyer consultation calls. I'm with you on listing appointments. I just showed a rental with an agent on my team. Um, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to show you how it's done and how it got there and how I've gotten to be pretty good at this. And I'm going to literally physically show you, like, I'm not going to just sit in the back and pick up a phone call and then yeah. pass it on. No, I'm going to show you how it's done. So then you can build your own brand and build your own, um, you know, put your own spice to it, like, and, and, and make it make it your own. But also I'm going to show you just the kind of baseline of it, how to do it right. Like, I will be there for all those appointments. And that's what I tell these people when they're joining my team. So I'm this is why he's very busy. <laughs> well, yeah, yes. Um, I like to do that, though, because yeah. that's how I, I was taught and, and – um, Real estate's a belly to belly business. So uh, when you see interactions, when you're sitting in a car with somebody else, when you're talking on the phone, when they hear you talking on the phone, it helps everybody grow. Helps yeah. me. Helps me too. Because yeah. I learn something new from I, everybody every day. I totally agree. I know that um, I've talked about this on the podcast a little bit before is that the office I was originally in mm-hmm. was very open door in that yeah. sense. And so being there, you know, Connor Tuck and I had yeah. discussed that we were the agents that just listened to everything. And so that just makes your vocabulary better when you're speaking to people. Even if it's people that have no idea about real estate, you can like practice saying things and Mm -hmm. it might not even be like, yeah, you're, you're just like learning. It just reps. You create that where you go though. You did that at your office where you were at before. Now you're bringing that here. You're good at creating that. You, you, yourself personally, like you you have a good open door policy. You talk to everybody. You, you put these events together. You're at events talking to people like, you're good at that. So it doesn't come naturally to everybody, but you're good at that. Well, so thank you. That's off. No, I, off I appreciate that. that. Yeah. Um, I, you know, for our, the leadership at our office, mm-hmm. I was very, um, it was, it was a requirement for me. Yeah. Like I knew I wanted to be in the city. I knew I wanted my license to be somewhere. It wasn't like mm-hmm. I was really being recruited. It was like, this is where my business is going. So I need to figure out where I'm going to yeah. land. And so when I started having that discussion and I'm like, this is what I need to thrive yeah. and I need to, I want to help you create that culture here. Yeah. So um, I think it benefits me because it makes me better, but then also I'm fulfilled by like uplifting others yeah. in that sense. But it's awesome to see the mm-hmm. new agents like sitting upstairs and like just great. soaking it all in. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's great to see that. It's great just, to see like, the showing up to everything. It's, it's awesome. Um, that's, yeah, that's like really yeah. what it's all about. But um, yeah, I love it too. You'd be Good surprised thing. how many deals come out of networking with other agents a, a, a lot yeah and and there is something to be said whether people like it or not if you have good relationships with good agents and other offices it's good we work together yeah i mean i know we're competing for deals and we're going on listing appointments uh, but i have fantastic relationships with a lot yeah. of agents and it helps me get deals done you have a reputation in this industry in our area for being like an agent people want to work with. Yeah, I, I'll see you at the closing table. Yeah. I'll get it done. I'll try to make it as easy as like, possible. I'd be <laughs> willing to bet that if you're writing a buyer, like an offer on a listing and you know that agent yeah. and you're up against two others, like. Maybe. It's going to be a tough one. <laughs> Maybe. It's definitely going to be a tough one. Like it'll come down yeah. to like the nitty gritty. Yeah. Well, that's um, my pitch to buyers when they're working with me that, you know, I've been doing this for a while. I know a lot of people. I yeah. know how to get the deals done. So I will position you in the right spot and then also you know working with the right buyers agents working with the right listing agent working with the right builder the right architect Mm -hmm. will put you in a position to succeed because like i said i want to be a hundred million dollar team in two years i'm yeah i'm going so like i tell my clients or i tell agents on my team hop on yeah we're we're going i think that's something i like i've I like look up to you in a sense and like respect about you and your business. Cause I think that I try to do everything in my power as well to be the best agent mm-hmm. bringing the offer. Yes. Like 
the buyers only have so much money. That's it. Like we can't waive appraisals yeah. or we can't waive inspections or we can only offer $300,000. Yeah. Like what can I do yeah. that will add a value? And that's maybe like breaking down the offer and highlighting them and giving them yes. a list of everything in there so the agent doesn't even have to open up my docs to exactly like figure right. out what the offer is. Exactly right. You don't know how many people don't do that. I just had a listing. I had 13 offers mm -hmm. come in. Not one of them told me what was in the offer in the email. <laughs> I don't know how, why, why, what are you doing if you're not doing that? What are you doing? It's very easy. You already it, know what's it in the said, offer. It literally <laughs> said like, see attached. Yeah. Or the worst, oh, this makes me so angry. When they send you a DocuSign yeah. like oh, link, yeah. like yeah. view docs. Like, no, no I don't want to open up no. my DocuSign. I want you to download them and then upload them to email yep. like I have to do with every offer that I submit. Like, yep. If you're I not doing that, what are you doing? No. What are you doing? What are you doing in this business if you're not doing that? No. It should be very, very simple. I will say though, we are moving into a market where these people that just miraculously oh, yeah. were doing business are going to get out of the business because yeah. they just can't. It's tough. And I tell everybody on my team about that. You know, I know that there's not a lot of inventory. We're fighting over small inventory. There's a lot of buyers, but buyers are a little wary. Um, I also tell them that, look, if you have the right work ethic, you do things the right way, you do it consistently, and you keep on getting better, you're, you're going to win deals. You're going to be in the right position. But if you're not, there, there's a lot of agents out there that aren't doing things the way that should be you know, they should be it done. It blows my mind. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Castle Public Adjusters. If you have fallen victim to property damage, Castle Public Adjusters is your first and only call. They will make sure that you get the maximum compensation for your property loss. Remember, avoid the hassle. Just call Castle. 215-752-1237. It's nuts. But so be it. More for uh, more for us. Because yeah. I'm not going to stop doing it the way we're doing no. it. And I'm only going to get better. But so. I just think it's funny, like, one of my, I have a referral partner that is a Remax agent mm -hmm. in the area. And he just actually, it was uh, almost two years ago yesterday that he pulled up the offer that I submitted on one of his listings. I was the lowest offer out yeah. of like 15 offers right. in lower bucks. And I didn't get it, but he called me back and he was like, it pains me that your clients don't have more money yeah. because you are the only one that made anything make sense. Yep. And all I'm doing is literally writing, hey, <laughs> You know, John Smith, yep. my buyers do not underline need to sell any real estate in order to yep. purchase this one, period. Below, you will find the details of this offer. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach yep. out. Also below is attached is my preferred lender's contact information. He is willing and able to take your call to discuss my buyer's yep. buying power. Yeah. Then I go and I put offer, deposit, inspections, any other contingencies, and a couple of dates. And I highlight them and then I just fill yeah. the information in. In this market, you have to do it. If there's 15, 16, 7, 20 offers. It, it took makes... me as long as me just saying that to you <laughs> to do it. Yeah. And it's the little things for me that's the greater good yes. for the team yes. and like makes their life easier. That goes into a lot of things. It goes into writing offers, doing open houses, follow up. You're right. Yeah. If you're not doing those little things, you're question. probably not doing them elsewhere. This is like, if you're not in real estate, it's a little bit of advanced question, but we'll talk about it. On the agreement of sale. Yeah where there's a box for when you need to return the deposit. Um, if the there, deal's it terminated. It has in parentheses 180 days. Yeah. Yeah, I typically switch it to 30 when I put it in there. Okay. Yeah. I did 10. Yeah, yeah, 10's <laughs> even better. I always put it to 30. But yeah. some people don't do it some at all. Some people even look at that. You know why? Because they don't know. They don't know, yeah. I Yeah, one of the first things I was taught. Can you imagine buying a house and your agent doesn't know things? Yeah. That's bad. And then six months, you got to wait to get your deposit back. Yeah, like let's say that- When you're trying so, to buy another home. Wait, so I had a client in Bucks County that was putting like two deposits, 100K mm -hmm. and 50K. Yeah. I mean, luxury. Big deposits. Yeah. yeah. But they were getting beat out in mm -hmm. the million plus market. So right. they had to stand out. You know, yeah. there was something they had to do. Could you imagine, we terminated a deal. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many days I had in the box? Probably five. 15. Yeah. Five. But still. Good. Good. Could you imagine if I had 180 no. and she Six had 100, 100 grand tied up? We oh. wouldn't have been able to, we would have literally not been able to right write other offer. offers. Another deposit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, granted, most won't take 180 days. No. But let's say that there's an issue though. Maybe yeah. they're arguing with us about the mm -hmm. deposit. Mm -hmm. Like that. It happens. You have to always protect them. You have to act like there is maybe going to be an issue. Yeah. You have to always protect your client. Yeah. You should be. Yes. It's a good point. So it's Very scary. Yeah. That's why I love this business though. Yeah. Intense. You're dealing with million dollars. You're dealing with big deposits. Yeah. Nice properties. I mean, we're selling, it It took a 30 hour and a 45 hour course for $500 for me to sell the most expensive thing the average person buys in their lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. 
crazy. I know. I know. It's great though. It's great. So before we get on to other topics, anything for someone who is an agent and they are looking to be more knowledgeable in the new construction world, yeah. maybe they have more clients that are going that way. What's something you would give them a piece of advice? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, something I do because it's a part of, of my business as an agent and as somebody who's looking to buy land and build. I visit a lot of new construction sites, even if I don't have a client mm -hmm. um, that's interested in them for many reasons. Um, first off, from the real estate side, I love, I take pictures, I post it on my Instagram, Facebook of beautiful model homes and people love seeing that. Um, secondly, it gives me great ideas for if I'm building a home or we're doing a custom home, I can see all the new appliances, countertops, flooring. That's awesome. Uh, you learn about price in the area because new construction typically demands a little bit of higher of a price. Um, you learn new builders that are around there. So if you have clients that are that are looking for new construction, but if you also are just looking to learn about new construction, visit all the, the model homes. Nobody's yeah. going to turn down a realtor who's actively working, yeah. comes in the door. Hey, can I have a brochure? I might have somebody interested. Yeah. Then you start learning about what's in the area. You know what's being built. You know what it looks like. You know what people like. And you never know. Like I've got, I can't tell you how many times that I've done showings and I've been like, hey, there's a new construction community coming up here. Are you interested? Well, let's maybe take a look. We yeah. don't know one. And, and people don't it. even know that they could like afford it. Right. And there it's, it's, and it's reasonable. Right there. Yeah. Right there. And it's, I always say everybody's favorite color is new. Um, so <laughs> that's, I like that. that's what I like to say. Cause, and that's just my builder, uh, future, you know, yeah. side of me, but that's, um, but that's what a lot of people like. And new construction is hot right now. We need more inventory. So I want to, like I said, I want to be the person to bring that inventory to market. But if you're a young agent, get to model homes, drive by communities. Yeah. Um, it's good for so many reasons. Yes. Talk to the sales lady or sales uh, sales guy in there and they know about new construction. Um, yeah. You know, it, you don't really have to get too far into the building, yeah. but just learn about it. Yeah. yeah. I like that. That's great advice. Yeah. So now we're going to switch up gears slightly. I don't take my phone out much, but I will for this. So we're going to do two things. We're mm. going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to do eight overrated or underrated. Cool. And then we'll do some unpopular opinions. So overrated or underrated door knocking? I'm going to get in trouble for this. It's overrated. Overrated? Yeah. Okay. I've done it a couple times, but. So have I. Yeah. I've couple. never sold any houses from it. No. I saw people in the pipeline, though, that I would follow up with. Yeah. Yeah. And I've done it when I've, I think it's best to do when you're doing an open house in that neighborhood. You go around and knock the immediate streets. Yeah, it's like hey, 10, 10, 10 4 or yeah, whatever that Yeah, I'm like, is. I'm doing an open house. I'm not really here to see it's you. It's going to be traffic -y. Just want to let you know. <laughs> right, I'm here to hey, help you. preview, if you want to come an hour <laughs> yes. earlier, come check out the house. That's, That's the way That's how you reel them in. And that makes you feel better about what <laughs> yeah. you're doing. Oh, yeah. The only time I've ever done door knocking <laughs> willingly, two, two things I used to do. Thanksgiving food drive. I used to do for yeah. one neighborhood that I did a good cause had a really good yeah. um, sale in. Yeah. So I was trying. It was a uh, hundred and eighteen houses in the neighborhood. I thought it would be a nice size for farming. Mm -hmm. Back when I was doing that, that was my motive. Yeah. The other one, I had a comp a listing that I sold, and it was the highest comp in the neighborhood for like four months. Right. And so I there was only like twenty houses. Yeah. In, it was a neighborhood in Newtown. Um. So you told I, them I sold this home for the best price. Well, I would possible. knock, and I'd say. I just want to let you know mm -hmm. you have equity in your home. Oh, yeah. Like, this is the highest comp yeah. by 100 grand. Yeah. It's great. Ever. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's yeah. good leverage. It's so good. then, and at first, they're, like, skeptical, and then they're like, well, wait, how much did it sell for? Mm -hmm. And then, like, they open the door, and then they open their body language, yep. and then, like, you start talking to them. Well, so that's, like, <laughs> yeah. And it's, like, a you're not coming to sell them anything. You're literally coming to provide value. Yep. So that's what I like to do. 100% agree with that. Working. So maybe... Overrated, but also underrated. I don't know. Depends oh, on yeah, the person. It's kind of in the middle. Depends <laughs> on what you're doing. Um, mailers. Uh, I think underrated. I yeah. think you should partner with somebody that you can work on and do mailers for sure. Uh, something I've been starting to do more in my business as well. It's kind of a set it and forget it type thing, right? It's mm -hmm. like you get them out, you get them out there, you, and then you be ready for the calls. And when the calls come in, you field them properly. And I think it's I think it's worth bang for your buck for those. Type yeah. Of uh, cold calling. Overrated. Uh, maybe because I've never done it and I was never really. Well, you did do well, it. Oh, I did. Yes. <laughs> oh, I did. Different life. Yeah, yeah. 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 In the real estate world, not as much. Yeah. Um, totally. Small conversion, but you can be really good at it, but yeah. it's a numbers game and it's a long play. Yeah. I've, I think I've maybe closed one deal from, from a cold call. Yeah. I'm a big referral based right. guy yeah. at this moment. So am I. Yeah. That's... And I'm more, I, I know that I'm better if I just am in front of people. Yeah. Same. Just factually speaking. Same. Um, Client parties. 
Uh, I think they're great, underrated. I think you should, uh, something on my list right now that I'm talking to my team about, something for the Phillies, something for first-time buyers, I think three or four years probably a good a good. Well, way let me sneak in a couple. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, showing assistant. Nah. Uh, I know how you feel about this, so that's why I threw no, it. No, you got you to gotta do that yourself. Yeah. Uh, overrated. Um, it's a different business model. When, when people want to hire me, when they call me, Nick, I want to work with you, or Nick, here, can you help my sister, or Nick, can you help my cousin, they're calling me. Yeah. Um, so it's very rarely I will pass them on to somebody else just maybe for a showing or two, mm -hmm. but you called me. It's my business. You called the DeLuca Group. If you you want me, you got me, and I'm going to be there. I'll, I Like I said, I was just showing 14,000 pieces, uh, pieces of land, literally 14,000 other pieces of land, and I also was just... And showing, you have appointments today. Yeah, I was, and I was showing seven and a half million dollars short houses. So, um, I will be there. I, I think no showing assistant, and you want me there because I know more than showing assistant. Probably yeah. no offense to the showing assistant, yeah. but yeah. Um, um, Twilight open houses. Uh, I think they're great. Throw them in, sprinkle them in. Underrated. Should do them. Hundred percent. Electronic lock boxes. Throw them away. <laughs> okay, well, also we throw away the lock boxes where... Um, yeah, like the locker lock boxes. Yeah, there's another one. You know the one where it's like a square and it's buttons? Yeah. And you have to push it. And then you have to push the code back in yes, again to, to lock, lock it. it? Throw away. No. It's very simple. I saw they were on sale. It was a whole thing of them at Home yeah. Depot and they were on sale. And I said, this should be illegal. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Like, that's because they're cheaper than the other master it's horrible. locks. It's horrible. It's no, bad. Buy them, Get subtract them. your lock boxes, four digit code. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So some unpopular opinion. <clears throat> Let me make one more comment yeah. before overrated, underrated. Open houses, underrated. Do them and do them every weekend. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm such a hater about open houses. No, they are. Closed, they work. I closed nine deals from one open house. Nine. I know they work. I just, okay. Do them. My background is restaurant industry. Yeah, right. And when I got out of the restaurant industry, I remember one day I was staring out the window <laughs> And it was a slow dinner shift, and I just clocked in, and it was raining. And mm. it's always bad when yeah, it rains, yeah, totally. and the crazies come out. Yep, same thing. With and I was staring, and I was like, I wish that my dad could just come and sign me out right now, like mm -hmm. it was school. Like I don't want to ever be told I can't leave somewhere. So I get this like drunk monkey in my mind right. that you're told to be here from twelve to two, and you can't leave, right? Or twelve to and three, if or whatever shows it is. Up, you still gotta be. Yeah, there. and you can't leave. Well, then you I don't like do being tired. You do work. I, I know that happens a lot. I, I do other work, and it makes me schedule two hours to do whatever. Or two hours of talking to people. Yeah. But and it's free. And it's free. And you're meeting them face to face. Immediately can build rapport. If I it's your listing, more. if it's your listing and they like talking to the listing agent, there's just something around talking. Oh, you're the listing agent? Yeah, let's let's talk about it. Yeah. Um, like I said, one time a couple years back, nine, nine, five hundred fifty thousand dollar deals from it. No joke. I did an open house for my listing in Lower Box and mm -hmm. I had uh sixty eight groups come through. Especially in today's market. And now look, 68 of them, probably 60 of them had a realtor. Yeah. It's but okay. But there's some good leads that are in the database there now. There is. There yeah. totally is. I'm still I'm still doing them and I'm still closing business from. I, I'm not saying they don't work. No. I know they work. I just personally yeah. have a, a thing I got to get no, past about doing them. You well, know? everybody asked me like uh, about them. Like if I were to pick up and move to California tomorrow or Florida or wherever, or Texas, yeah. and I had a build over without having known anybody in the area. Yeah. I, I would be doing them Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because yeah. that's like the only way you're going to really meet people. And you that just and would have to align with an office that has a, somebody has a bunch of listings. Hey, that's exactly what right. listings can I take? That's exactly right. Yeah. That's like the first thing I would start doing because yeah. you're right, it's free. It's easy. It takes your time. But I, anytime anyway. an agent, um, a new agent talks to me, I always say, do everything that's free. That's what I did. I did open houses. Mm -hmm. I, I did um, like... Uh, like lost a, my train of thought. Well, like social a, media? Like social media. You go to a networking event. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, even if it's other realtors, but you can go to anything. Yeah. Anything. I Just agree. do everything that's free. Yep. Yeah. You never know where the next deal is coming from. You're like always one turn away from getting it. I always think at the end of the year, I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to do this again next year? Yeah. The end of the year's here. Yeah. It's Christmas. It's cold. Now I got to restart again and sell all these homes again for the next year. And now it's end of March. The first quarter's over. And I'm like, oh my God, we're back at it again. Are you on track? Yeah, more, I think. Nice. We'll see. So, fingers crossed. But, nice. Uh, yeah. Nice. So. Okay, so unpopular opinions. <clears throat> Leaving your business card at the showing. Never, never do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, just my opinion. I never do it. It's going in the trash. It's a waste of my business card. Yeah. I don't care to intimidate anybody that's walking in. Right. 
I think that's why people do it. I think so too. Now I think that's why people do it. They used to do it because we didn't have showing time. Yeah. And then they could see who was there and they yeah. could text all the people. I totally get that yeah. part. But right now with every app that you have, yeah. it's a click on showing time. It's a click on a cell phone. How was the showing? I don't so leave that, a business card. Never. Yeah. I don't leave them ever. No. And I've had clients say, oh, are you going to leave your card? And I'm like, for what? Yeah. No, see like the they one. know we're here. I already, mm. I scheduled this appointment online, but I think it's funny when you walk in and like, obviously the listing agent like lined them up. up. Yeah, to show. I probably have a, a bag of them somewhere <laughs> from when I've done a listing and I, have, yeah. I just forget to throw them out. I yeah. should just throw them at my <laughs> listing and just make, it make like, like all those popular. people were there. Yeah, yeah, it's not a bad tactic for <laughs> listing agents. Um, so that brings us to another one. <laughs> agents that don't leave feedback for showings. I'm a culprit of this sometimes and I, sh I should, I shouldn't be. Um, I guess if they don't leave feedback, Right away in my mind, I know they don't like it, I guess. So I kind of just make peace with the situation. Yeah. Um, and then if they do leave it right away, I like it because then you get that feedback and maybe can start the deal going. I'm like 50-50 on that yeah. one. Like, I think we're coming out bad. of a market where it didn't matter, right? Right, yeah. However, I was talking to someone who's listening heavy before the podcast about this, and she was like, she brought up a good point because I notoriously forget to leave yeah. feedback. It's so. not like I'm not doing it on purpose, no. just forget to do yeah. it. Um, she was like, if I have a listing that I took overpriced and I know it is, mm. I need you to leave the feedback great point. so that I can tell the great point. seller, like, this is the feedback we got. Mm -hmm. And so I actually, now that I think about it, I've had a, agents that I know be like, hey, can you uh, go leave some feedback? It's a because great idea. It's a great We got to get this price down. It really is. And it's true. And yeah. And even if it is negative feedback, some people don't leave it because they don't like to be negative. Right. But you're right. It can can help and it, and yeah. it can help a seller. Yeah, like it's, it's not, sometimes it's not the listing agent thinks yeah. that they know everything. It's they did what their client yeah. asked and they need your help. Yep. I, yeah. I, I agree. I, I tell them, don't be afraid to tell me what you didn't like because I know it might sound negative, but still it helps me. Help yeah. I had a coach in the beginning that once said, don't be the agent that doesn't leave feedback. So yeah. I All right. I should, that should, we should, that's doing. our new thing. Yeah. We're going to leave you know. feedback. I got to show in a little bit. I'm leaving feedback. Yeah. Well, I know they're going to like it because there's only one house on the market. But yeah. <laughs> so what are they going to do? There's no offers coming. There's my feedback. Yeah. <laughs> um, your picture on your business card. I'm cool with it. You're cool with it? Yeah, I'm cool with it. I'm over it. Um, yeah, I know. I've had a feeling there's going to be a time where. We're, we're like the it. only industry that does that. I know. I don't know why. I don't know either. I, I think I have. I think my face is on it. it well, your for face a while. is not on your signs anymore. No, 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 no. No face on signs. Yeah. It's not about me. Right. It's but about it is a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. But it's about the team <laughs> and it's about selling the property. Yeah. Whether my face is on there or not, it's about a brand. It's a, essentially a marketing advertising brand, the yeah. Luca Group, Keller Williams, um, selling that home. So my face on it or not. Only yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's a good question. This one, I don't know. You're going to think about this one. Uh, yeah. Brokers opens are just for hanging out. Totally. Workers I've been to are, one of your brokers open that I totally just hung out at. <laughs> yeah. It's like my team and a couple people who know about it. If I see a DeLuca brokers open, yeah. I'm going. Go. Yeah. We're going to have <laughs> soda, pizza, beer, some yeah. kind of sandwiches. Like like I, I got a new listing on Bainbridge Street in South Philly. First text in the in the group chat was like, brokers open. Should we get Angelo's pizza? And everybody's yep. like, uh, yeah. Like I, we should just be doing that anyway and hanging out as a team. But yeah. it's an excuse like yeah. you said. So occasionally you'll get people they come. I will say sometimes you do a broker's open on like a Wednesday or a Thursday and there's no showings till till the weekend. You're just letting brokers through. And there will be a broker too that has come and been like, Nick, my clients are coming over the weekend. They really love it. So maybe that's good. Yeah. But most of the time. I would say out. that the idea behind it was to have agents, brokers preview the home yeah. without agents, then they can be prepared for when it hits the market. Yep. However, I guess because of the market that we've been in, they haven't really been for that use. It's more no. of a networking type of thing. But I just yeah. think it's funny because it's really not like selling the house. Yeah. I mean, if the market flips in the future. We'll need then, to. Right. And maybe it'll have to be bigger. You'll spend more money because agents do have the buyers. And sometimes, look, I, I truly believe that there's a lot of agents that aren't seeing homes that their buyers would like. So if the market does flip, then yeah, maybe brokers opens will come back in a, yeah. in a big way. But yeah. it's just a hangout for you. Know? Yeah. I, like I think <laughs> I've been to like four or five because of COVID. We yeah. haven't really had burgers open. No. Um, I think I've been to four or five in the city and I think three of them were yours. Yeah. We're just hanging out. <laughs> um, and I remember like Duffy being like, oh, come yeah. to this burgers open. Like, well, back on my open. old team, um, a good friend of mine at Ellenberg who helped teach me how to sell real estate, we yeah. would do brokers opens together and it would just be hanging yeah. out. So I kind of brought that over to the Deluca yeah. group now. I mean, <laughs> and from like the seller standpoint, like, 
yes, we're joking and laughing that it's a hangout, but like we're oh, cultivating we're relationships that will get deals done for oh, yeah. you. So like that's a the good reason open. why we should do it. And yeah. it's marketed online. It's marketed on Zillow. It pings everybody. So there's good things, but at the moment right now, it doesn't really need to probably be done too much. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Okay. Last one. Um, this one grinds my gears. Uh, active under contract instead of pending. Yeah. Uh, is it necessary? Like unpopular opinion, the people, there's people that religiously use that and they have like a period of time. I think it's BS. Yeah. I, I probably should be better at it. Um, cause there is, I guess, a correct period of time when you're under contract going through inspections, then you're, yeah. um, in today's market, typically a deal is once it's under contract, it's under contract. Yeah. Um, unless there's something severely wrong with the home. Like, did so, you pick a good deal or not? Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. That's a good question though. Like, I don't, I you don't just do move it. Right. Depending. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of think I just do that same thing too. Because the thing is, if it is pending no matter what, because if it's contingent on a mortgage, it's always going to be pending. Technically. Yeah. You're right. And so like, yeah, At that if point, I need, if, it, if it's not pending anymore or it's not active under contract anymore, yeah. then it's going back to, it's active. going back to active. And right. if it's under active under contract or pending, if it goes back to active, people are going to ask what happened anyway. Yeah. I just think it's pointless. Yeah. It kind of is. It's or every step. I wasn't going to bring this up, but people that don't update the MLS. Yeah. Pet, these are pet peeves, not really unpopular. No, no. And these, I agree. That should be a little bit better too. I, that's why I got to get, you know, maybe a little bit more help. Yeah. Well, you get in trouble. Yeah. You get in trouble for sure. That's like five oh, yeah. grand. Right. Right is all over you. Or about MLS that. will be right on you about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't like getting those emails. And well, and some people purposely do it though. Yeah. Like some people leave it active oh, yeah. so they can get buyer leads from. Yeah, it. yeah. No, they should have been doing that beforehand. So, yeah, I don't know. It's like, what's it's an extra couple of days going to get you? No, no. And, and like I said, in this market, yeah, maybe you get some buyer leads. Most people have an agent they're working with and have been working with for a while because yeah. most people have written with multiple offers. Right. Um, so very few. You know, far between are you going to get those leads, but it could happen. Yeah. Okay. Last question I'll ask you since I just came to mind. Yeah. Um, have you ever, I feel like you're going to say no, but have you ever had a buyer's agency contract signed? First of all, do you get them signed? No. <laughs> I know. That's another thing. I tell people. <laughs> I don't do it. We want to work either. with each other. We're going to work with yeah. each other. You want to fire and also, me, Also, if you don't me. want to, then just yeah, then don't. you don't want to. But have you ever gotten it signed and they cheat on you and you went after it? No, never. Have you ever had the opportunity to go after it? Uh, Yeah. And I and I and I've only signed a very few buyer agency contracts, very few. Yeah. And it was more when I was first in the business, honestly. Yeah. Because that's the con like documents and things like that was I was taught or taught to do. But um, I had a chance to go after it and didn't. And yeah. and I'm not about I'm not a, I'm not about that honestly. Neither um, am I. I have I will say one time, and just for anyone who's if you're listening and you don't know what it is, buyer's agency contract is the contract between you and the agent, and it states what type of representation you are right. and what your commissions are. Yep. There is a line in there that says, if it's filled out correctly, that if a listing is offering, if you're saying, hey, I'm signing this for a two two and a half percent commission mm -hmm. and the listing is offering two, the agent is able to ask you to pay the yep. f the difference. Yep. Um, it also protects you if you are showing a client and then all of a sudden they start seeing house with somebody else and they write an offer and mm -hmm. they're under contract with you. Mm -hmm. However, I would never hold someone to that. Like if you decide that we're not a good fit anymore, you don't want to look anymore, I just yeah. cancel it. One time, I ran these clients for like six months <laughs> and then they decided to go and write an offer with another agent mm -hmm. in a neighborhood I've been showing them. And the agent, they went under contract and like the whole nine yards. And I probably wouldn't have done this now, but just to be like petty, yeah. I just called the agent up to scare them mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, hey, this is Juliana from XYZ. And they're like, oh, hey, how are you? I'm like, just so you know, clients XY and XY they knew. Um, have a buyer's agency with me. Yeah. So you should be careful and maybe ask them if they're in a buyer's <laughs> agency contract before you write offers because nope. I could come after you for 25% yeah. or my whole commission or right. whatever it was. And the agent was like, <laughs> yeah. like they were like, oh, well, I'm so sorry. I didn't know, I didn't know. It. And yeah. I was like, it's fine, but you should ask. Yeah. Yep. Like, for instance, I have a client I'm working with right now who was had a buyer's agency with another agent. Yeah. He did not like working with them. It wasn't a good fit. And I said, did you sign a contract? Yeah. And they said, I don't think so. I said, well, what have you signed? And he said, I'll send you the documents. They didn't even know yeah. that they signed the yeah. buyer's agency. It, it wasn't explained. Yep. So I said, this is, if you, if you choose, you don't want to work with them anymore. You need to in writing, tell them yep. you want to terminate. Oh, yeah. And I said, and I'll send them a referral. Yep. And I, I think at the end of the day, and I, I'm on the same page as you here, but at the end of the day, it's, um, again, this is where realtors get confused. It's not about us as realtors. 
It's about our clients and our clients get to choose what they want. So if right. they're selling their home and they choose to work with you and it doesn't end up working out, they let go of you. Like I, I feel bad, but sticking it to the client isn't always the smartest idea, but same thing with buyers. You, the, the, the client chooses who they work with. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. And that's what you got in this business. You got to, and gotta like, um, you know, like, and like I said, for the other guy, like I'm going to send him a referral. Oh, yeah, it's just like, he put work in and like, I just it's like what people you to do. like me, totally like, you what know, you like it's do. whatever. Um, it happens, but it's I like business. to, yeah. It's business. That's what everybody's remembering. It's business. It's not emotional. It's, it's business. Yeah. Sometimes it gets emotional. <laughs> Certain situations, but, yeah. um, most I'm sure the list and, uh, and stories oh. would go on. Oh, my God. Yeah, we can go on forever. I mean, again, you know, from doing it at all different levels from a loan officer to doing real estate to building homes, it's it's an emotional process, but it's a business at the end of the day. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's pretty much it for today. Cool. This is great. Thank, Thank you, you so much yeah, this is great. for letting me be the podcast <laughs> that you finally yeah, come on and yeah, chat yeah. with. I hope this was not. No, it was great. Okay. I love I can keep cool. going. Cool. I love it. So um, the underscore DeLuca underscore group on Instagram? Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Yep. So if you want to find out more about yeah. the DeLuca group, that's where you go. Yep. If you want to follow me on Instagram, Jewel underscore the realtor, Jewel the realtor on TikTok. We are also realtor-ish underscore podcast on Instagram. If you are listening to this on YouTube and you want to listen to it on your favorite podcast platforms, we are on Spotify and Apple Music. And that's it for today. And we'll see you next time. Awesome.